to go back 40 years ago to a rom-com, quote, fantasy movie that was a huge success. And let's bring him in. As we go to film school with film study professor, good friend Joe Fortunato with us. Good morning, Joe. Take the story from there. Good morning, Greg. Good morning, everybody. And, uh, yeah, we're going back to the 80s again today. I feel like we've been doing that a while. But, uh, there's a lot of great, great anniversaries coming up in uh, films of the 80s. And today... We're going to make a splash. <laughs> yes, uh, it's uh, the movie Splash from 1983. Um, actually, it was a sneak preview in November of 1983. It had a wide release in March of 1984. Uh, so we're kind of considering that our 40th anniversary. It was directed by Ron Howard. Uh, it was written by Brian Grazer, uh, Lowell Gang, and Babalu Mandel. And, of course, it stars Tom Hanks, Daryl Hannah, as well as Eugene Levy and John Candy. And this was when uh, Ron Howard and Brian Grazer were really starting to, uh, uh, I'm going to overuse the pun again, make a splash uh, in, uh, in uh, Hollywood with their um, uh, movie company Imagine, and uh, Ron Howard being the director and Brian Grazer being the producer. And it was actually Grazer who came up with the idea for this movie way back in 1977 when he was driving down Pacific Coast Highway, and he just sort of looked out at the ocean and thought, what would it be like if you met a mermaid and fell in love? And that's sometimes how movies get made. <laughs> anyway, Ron Howard uh, turned down the directing duties on some other uh, big 80s hits, Mr. Mom and Footloose, to make this movie. Uh, I think it worked out well for everybody. But uh, this is also the first movie released under Disney's new, then new, Touchtone, Touchtone Pictures label, which was created so the studio could release a little bit more adult-oriented fare as opposed to, uh, you know, being labeled more of a children's movie. <clears throat> the fountain that's in the movie Splash is now actually on display at Disney's MGM Studios at Walt Disney World, mm. and uh, the uh, the mermaid fin that Daryl Hannah wore is behind the bar at Planet Hollywood in downtown Disney. The... Um, this is, I always, I found this kind of interesting that the, the movie is credited with introducing, uh, or maybe popularizing, but, uh, however you want to look at it, the girl's name Madison, which has since become one of the most popular names for newborn girls, you know, here in the 21st century. Uh, but at the time, it was a very unusual name for a woman. And, uh, you might recall in the movie, uh, she gets the name from Madison Avenue, seeing the signpost. Um, but uh, in the years that, uh, uh, you know, it was released, it, it, it uh, spawned the popularity of the name Madison for girls, which I, I, I hear of that a lot, actually. Another fun fact is that Ariel in The Little Mermaid, uh, beloved animated feature by Disney, was originally going to be a blonde character. Of course, most of you know that she's now a redhead, uh, but she was made a redhead so that she would look different from Madison in this movie. Daryl Hannah uh, actually swam with the mermaid tail so fast that her safety team couldn't keep pace with her. Um, and, uh, you know, it was the fin was a big problem. The fin weighed 35 pounds. It took technicians three hours each day to put it on her, and she had to remain still while it was being attached. And then she said that at lunch they would just yank me out <laughs> on a crane and plop her on the deck like a, a fresh catch, I guess. Uh, and, uh, you know, she couldn't eat anything because she couldn't go to the bathroom. Uh, so she just sort of lay there shivering, uh, soaking wet. And, uh, so she, she, it was a big pain for her. And I always kind of marvel, you know, we forget sometimes as we see the magic of, of movie making on screen. Uh, we talk about that from time to time. Oh, it took someone so four hours in the makeup chair. That's, that's really hard. If you think about it, can you imagine having to spend four hours, three or four hours uh, before you even really go to work? Uh, but, uh, you know, they, they, they get compensated. So anyway, Joe, some fun stories. Joe, one thing, and I, and I get confused with the timeline and everything, but Splash 84 with Tom Hanks, was this him coming right out of Bosom Buddies and still into the comedy roles before he jumped into serious roles? Where does this picture rank with the, the evolution, I should say, of Tom Hanks, the movie star? Well, um, he was, uh, this is definitely, um, <clears throat> him sort of, uh, um, you know, uh, burgeoning, I should say, as a, uh, uh, as a, um, a, a movie star. I mean, he mm -hmm. was, uh, uh, certainly wasn't that he was, uh, uh, unknown, but, uh, he wasn't 
the big star and the big Oscar winner yet. So it definitely was early in his career and, and moved the needle, uh, as we might say. Um, the uh, you know we, we kind of always like to talk about casting and stuff. Uh, Tom Hanks says that he was actually the eleventh choice to play <laughs> the main role. I think he's sort of joking, but uh, uh, before Tom Hanks accepted the role, uh, it had already been turned down by the likes of Chevy Chase, Bill Murray, Dudley Moore. John Travolta, Michael Keaton, um, and uh, Travolta actually passed on the advice of his agent. And uh, there was even some other names that are, are almost kind of odd when you think about it. Burt Reynolds, um, huh. Robin Williams. So, again, we talk about this a lot, but it's kind of a who's who of, of who was hot at the time. Yeah. Steve Gutenberg actually auditioned for the lead uh, role but didn't get it. But, but Ron Howard did remember him and thought he was good in his audition and gave him a role in his next movie, uh, Cocoon. So, uh, again, worked out okay for him. And uh, a lot of actresses <clears throat> were auditioned or considered for the role of Madison that, uh, that Daryl Hannah got. Uh, Jodie Foster auditioned but turned it down. Uh, Rosanna, Rosanna Arquette auditioned but back, had to back out. Uh, Brooke Shields turned it down. Uh, so that she could study French literature at Princeton, so she went to school. And uh, some of the other ones, and I, I like this one, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, uh, Melanie Griffith, Tatum O'Neill, Michelle Pfeiffer, Sharon Stone, wow. Kathleen Turner. Uh, again, uh, you know, a, a kind of a who's who of who's hot at the time. Um, one, one fun name that kind of goes into that mix, people might remember, Lisa Welchel from uh, The Facts of Life. And uh, mm. because her huge popularity as Blair in the Facts of Life, she was actually considered for the role. There you go. Splash from 1984. And as Joe said, making a splash on all of our Fridays, going back in time with Tom Hanks and Daryl Hannah. Joe, as always, my friend, well done. Hey, how did everything go Wednesday with your online film school? And we opened it up and we had you join us when you talked about The Graduate. How did everything yeah. go there? We had a lot of fun, and thanks for uh, those who joined us online. And uh, I don't know when that will come up as an option again, but if I find out, uh, I'll definitely let you know. Uh, I did want to take a moment, and, yeah. and thanks for asking, by the way. Uh, I did want to take a moment to, and this is, uh, I don't know, 10 days away, a week and a half or so. Uh, you know, Oscar season is coming up, and I'm actually going to be doing a talk, uh, discussion, lecture, whatever you want to call it, on the Oscars and the history of the Oscars, uh, the uh, uh, you know biggest moments, the biggest controversies, and then of course at the end of that we'll have a discussion on this year's Oscars and uh, talk about predictions and who might win and all that kind of stuff. That's going to be taking place March fourth. That's a Monday uh, at six thirty p.m. at the Green Branch Library. That's the you know Akron Public Libraries, uh, the Green Branch, which is at uh, forty forty six Maslin Road in Green. That is free, absolutely free. Uh, so I definitely welcome everybody to come out. And uh, join us for some a uh, uh, little bit of Oscar knowledge and some Oscar discussion and talk. Yeah, that is Joe's uh, Super Bowl World Series <laughs> Game Seven. Man, he knows his stuff for sure. We'll we'll talk some more about that next week. Joe, as always, my friend, thanks for the time and visiting us, and we'll reconnect next Friday. Absolutely, look forward to it, Ray. Thanks, everybody. Well, you got it, Joe Fortunato. He takes us to film school. He's a film study professor and joins us Fridays here on the Ray Horner Morning Show.